Hello, everybody. Welcome to Tarot Off the Cuff. My name is Kevin Quigley, and we are so glad that you joined us. Our next reader is Nancy Antonucci. She's a soothsayer, a pool player, and a movement magician. In her first life, Nancy was a choreographer and a dancer. She loves teaching tarot, and we hope that you love what she has to offer. Hello. I'm Nancy Antonucci, or as I prefer to be called, Nooch, especially in the tarot sphere. Um, so I have my second to ever deck, Morgan Greer. And one of the reasons I love the Morgan Greer is like it is kind of like the Rider Waite, um, but like as if there was a zoom camera. So it's it's this, it's the same Rider Waite figures, but it's like, wah, and it's very colorful and bold. Um, I think Morgan Greer is like a lovely, lovely first deck uh, for, especially for someone who's learning. I, I love, I love the Morgan Greer. So let me shuffle my Morgan Greer and see which one wants to come up. Which card will trigger something that would hopefully be usable, functional to you? I think we learn a lot by people's stories, especially locker room stories. I think that's one reason when Kevin asked me if I wanted to help him with this project, I'm like, yeah, because we need different ways of learning. Um, and uh, storytelling is like the best. And storytelling with tarot, because it doesn't get any better than that. I don't, I don't think it does. And I have the Ace of Wands, or Rods. They call it Rods in this deck. The Ace of Rods. You know, you know, with the world as, as odd as it has been lately, there's four aces and they all have these God hands that are holding that element. And I had a client once who, uh, honestly did not see a future and it's not that she was going to commit suicide or die or anything there was just literally no future and i started seeing that a little bit more in in millennials and i'm 62 so anyone under 40 whatever you millennials whatever you want to call them call yourselves there's a different way. Uh, there's already in my my way of seeing this or or noticing this energy. There's a different way of actually even looking at the future, not how the future will roll out. That there is an, there is even a future, you know. And I that's a very scary thought to me. I mean, I remember you know people of my age. You're just like, well, I'll be a grandmother with eight kids. You know, it's like we you know we at least knew what the formula was going to be, but there's no formulas now. We're in a different place now, you know, and I always thought, I wonder if we should add a different ace, you know, with a big hand that has an eraser <laughs> and it's just erasing the future. Now, and there's pros and cons to that. The, the, the pros is, could we erase racism? Could we erase the oppression and capitalism at, at this level of greed? Could we just erase some of those things since we kind of keep doing them over and over again but also could we just open it up for how we really want to envision this can we literally create as a human as a species can we actually create a different vision and live in it and live up to it i mean that's what the ace has always promised to me the different elements this ace is is bringing me this beautiful wood i love trees i've always loved trees um, and some, like if a giant hand was going to hand me a tree, it would be like fertility and roots and connecting to the sky. I mean, the tree to me is just such a perfect symbol of life. I mean, without trees, we wouldn't be alive because we need the oxygen they provide for us. Um, A lot too, and, and I, I didn't want to see this when I was starting to read, when I was initially reading, I wanted to just stay, you know, uh, 
you know, I've followed my own instincts a lot, but I, you know, also studied traditional meanings. It helps. There's no one right path with tarot. I would highly recommend you just follow your curiosity to whichever system would help reveal something to you. A lot of people really go deep into the astrology within tarot. I don't. I, I've never actually really been called to astrology that much, but I do remember as a younger reader, I, I didn't really understand the, the, um, the, the uh, meaning or the definition that a lot of readers give it, which is, is sexuality. It is, it's, it's the penis. <laughs> it's the, it's the penis. You know, can I, can I say that on YouTube? I don't know. I, I think you can say penis, but you can't say COVID for some reason. I'm not, I don't know. I'm not sure about that, but this isn't a paid channel. So we don't, it's not monetized. So we don't really have to worry about that. Um, but Sexuality is a very interesting topic with someone, that, a client that is sitting in, re, you, that you don't know, you don't know this person. Um, but I do like that idea of the Ace of Wands is actually kind of like a new sense of sexuality, a new sense of sensuality, creativity. I mean, if you think of it, our second chakra has sexuality and creativity together. So it, it's it's a it's the creative force in us. And the more I read for people, the easier it has it has become for me to speak about sexuality, what disappoints them, what never felt right to them. Um, how that's really a really a part of our identity that it. It, it's not actually what you actually do with others. It is, uh, it's the dance, but it's also just who are you sexually? Like you can, you can feel somebody in the room that is just in their fire, you know? I mean, wands is wood, it burns. It burns fire. Fire is that kind of passion in our lives. And you can feel when somebody's, enjoying their passion and and it, it don't matter what you think <laughs> you know it's like no it's rare i might add i don't know if i really experience it as much in minnesota as i do on the east coast it seems a little bit more open there but um i'm not putting down i'm not putting down my fellow minnesotans um but they're just a little bit more um that's kind of rare to feel somebody totally in their fire here. Yeah, uh, yeah, you have to get to know them for a while. <laughs> you know, you need you need the club card. What else do I want to say about aces? Uh, it, it, what I'm really what's really striking me more is really about the aces and how the aces also hold the potential of the entire suit. And there's four suits in tarot, the four elements. So the ace is really like this seed. It's this promise of an entire new sequence of that element. So it's you. It's the beginning. So if, if I got an ace of wands, especially if I'm like reading about a creative project or a work or um, a friendship, if you see ace of wands, it's promising the entire one suit which is a lot of creativity a lot of passion some tension um there further down the line you're going to see people in the one suit like kind of smacking each other up and you know i mean the creative tension that can happen but or the the eight or the nine of wands where yeah he's already got smacked several times so he's just standing there kind of being vigilant you know, with, all right, this time I'm going to be prepared the next time somebody comes and hits me with a two by four, very literally. So there's, there's battle, there's battle in all the elements, but to me, the, the wands has kind of the, the, the inherent battle of creativity and, and anyone in an artistic or creative process, there is going to be some phase in your creative process where different ideas are coming up and, it's not 
for artists, it's not confusing. In fact, that's actually my favorite part of the creative phase is who's winning? Who's going to win? Can I get a better idea than that? You know, like, hmm, what's the potential? Phew. You know, so like, how far can this go? Push, 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 push. But then I'm in Aries, and if you did it astrologically, the wands are my suit, you know, and the queen of wands is often known as the Aries. So, you know, we like our fire. Now, the trouble with fire, though, is that it can really start fast and then fizzle out really fast. Or if you don't build it right, you know, it's like water or if there's damp on earth, it's like, you know, dies. Or if there's too much air, blows it out, you know. So fire is pretty volatile that way. It's actually kind of vulnerable, too, but so is creativity. So is sexuality and sensuality, too. I mean, they're all kind of dynamic forms, but you know, uh, they need the stability of the other elements to keep them going, to, to keep them strong. You know, I wrote a book called uh, Psychic Tarot, How to Use Your Natural Abilities to Read the Cards. And my dad, it was always to me, was the king of rods. You know, he, he was uh, a Pennsylvania farmer. And he and I would take many walks in the woods together and he would show me different, you know, he, he knew all the trees. He knew, he knew them, knew them like sycamore, hickory, oak. It was wonderful. It was wonderful to be in the trees with him. So sometimes I, th I think of just the wands. I still tend to kind of go towards him if I'm, you know, going into a deep meditation with him. Um, and in fact, he's near the end of his life right now, and I'm sending energy for him to kind of find the forest on the other side. Because if he died and woke up surrounded by redwood, I, he would know he's safe. He would know he's in the right place. So, yeah, I think that's, uh, I think that's what I need to say about the ones. So, or the ace of ones in particular. So thank you. I hope I hope you got something from this. Hey, this is Kevin. Hi, this is Nooch. Thanks for watching. If you like what you saw, please hit a thumbs up and subscribe. You'll know when new ones are coming. And share with your friends. We'll see you soon.